Greetings. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, brought to you by Heart and Soul Broadcasting Services. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today I'm in conversation with Bishop Neva Mparuta. If you enjoy this conversation, remember to subscribe, to like, and share. Let's get down to some work. Bishop Nevon Parutsa, I'm so delighted that you agreed to come and sit in front of me and we have a conversation. Yes, sir. How are you? Anna? I am very well. Good to have you. Good Thank you. you. Thank you. I, I'll, I'll Pleased start, to be here. I'll start you where you, you, we were together at a meeting. Um, um, just, just share with us what that meeting was, was about before I, I get on to uh, what, I, what I want to ask you. The meeting was, uh, if I remember, AFRIG, yes. Africa on Religion and Government Forum, that we were having a breakfast meeting that we bring together um, politicians, business people, um, church leaders, and key people in society to come together to share ideas, basically to make Africa a prime continent. That's basically what that is all about. The whole idea is to begin to look at how we can develop the next generation of leaders that uh, fear God and care for the continent and care for others. You know, before I go on to actually, be, you, as you talk, you remind me of uh, what the professor from Ghana said, mm -hmm. which has remained with me. And he, he said, if I remember well, correct me if I'm wrong, he says, we do not aspire to be like the West. Yes. We aspire to be better than the West. So the West cannot set an example for us. True. We ought to have our own vision. Did you want to unpack that a little bit? Yes, that was Professor Della de Devo, who is uh, the founding um, leader of Africa. So basically what we're looking at is the West definitely is not what we aspire to be. Of course, we can pick a lessons from them, that, but they are not our ultimate aspirations. We believe that we have all what it takes as Africa, as Zimbabwe, to do what we need to do if we dig deep in who we are. Because basically all that we see happening over there, let's call it over there in the West and everywhere else, most of the things behind it are Africans. In, every, in, in everything that you see and every sector, what uh, the Westerners were good at doing is basically manage our skills. Mm. It's us employing the skills and they manage that. Mm. And that. But what we get to see is who is managing, but we don't see who is skilled. Mm. Who is doing it. Who is doing it. And you can't do it without a skill. Absolutely. And it has been us. You go so what, into farming and everything else. What do we aspire else. to be as, as Africans? Do we have a sense? I mean, that was a beautiful meeting that we had uh, with Douglas Mboweni from Econet, with a lot mm. of uh, you know prominent people praying yes. and sharing. Uh, what, what, what are we aspiring to become? So what we are aspiring to become, first of all, is to... Create an Africa that God wants because God is our ultimate aspiration. What is it that God intends for the world to be? It's not what the West has become. In fact, the West has lost it. It is that which God wants us to be. The human being is the ultimate, is the prime of God's creation. So what we are looking at is, let's go back to the origins that which God intend us to be. That's what we want Africa to be. And the rest of the world will follow suit. Mm. You can see what the West is trying to do as well in the process is to make us conform to the current uh, state of affairs that we see. But when you look at what the Bible is saying we must become, the honor, the respect, and uh, the dignity of a human being is what Africa should be. Mm. Hopefully our leaders, whether it's in the polit 
practical uh, realm, whether it's in business, whether it's in church, and do everywhere else, we then get to come to understand the dignity of a human being, which is done obviously when we begin to develop, develop everything that makes a human being what God intends it to be, which is our biggest problem right now in Africa, the desire to develop in every other area of life. And, and, and our manual from the Creator is yes. the Bible. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's it. And, and so we, we, how can we live our lives completely ignoring the manual from He who created us? That's the tragedy of where we are. That's the biggest challenge we are having when people are now more AI-oriented than they are to go back to the manual of the Bible. Or, I mean, the manual of life, which is the Bible. You look at Genesis chapter 2, I think around verse number 5. The Bible speaks about why God did not allow the rain to come on earth so that the, 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 the rains caused the earth to produce without a man. God did not allow that to happen before he put a man because what God wanted was the man to manage his creation. And he had put everything in us before we were corrupted by the devil. Or by uh, as we go, we're keeping on corrupting ourselves but we're, by what we call knowledge. The Bible is very clear. Knowledge shall abound in the last days. It is our mismanagement of knowledge Knowledge that is not turned into wisdom that is taking us astray. Now you can see with we what's happening. We will get to, to that uh, <laughs> beautiful space, but I must go to this, the, the question that I want, I've been wanting to ask you for the benefit of the viewers out yes. there. When we met in this meeting, you stood up and you said um, you had met your father yes. for the first time yes. uh, that week, which is about three, two, two, yes. two months ago. And you, you met your father for the first time, and he's 96. Talk to us about that experience of <laughs> discovering your father, and uh, he's, he's, he's 96. Okay. It's a very interesting story. Uh, let me start by saying, was born in Gurue, okay? Left Gurue with my mom under the circumstances then. Then grew up in Manikaland in Mutare and Dora to be, Dora Estate. Are you be. the only child? No. No, okay. Now, when I left Gurue, I was um, about two, three years old. My sister then was six months in my mother's womb. My mother then had other children with, um, in a different marriage later on. So the circumstances were such so hard that my mom had to go back home mm. and left my father there. And my father never dared follow up. Mm. And uh, so I was raised, born, a, 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 what you call it, a, a guru, and we are what, um, uh, Makore Kore, mm -hmm. born in Kore Kore, raised a Manika person in my baby up to about, 21 years old, in my professional years, raised in Zezur. You can understand the concoction that I am <laughs> now. <laughs> so all along, my mother was so hurt that she didn't even want to hear even the question about where do I come from? Who am I? So I grew up, I was raised up by my grandmother, a very tough woman. Her nickname was California. Why? She was very tough. She it was such a woman who could make men run. She used to be a manager at a farm. She used to ride horses. So she, she, she developed us very tough to know how to look after ourselves because the circumstances were such that we grew up with my segurus, mm -hmm. my uncles on my mother's side, my right. paternal uncles, right. who you know culturally how they look at Muzuguru or, you know, so they looked at us so funny, but my grandmother was very tough. And one thing she taught me was, the only thing that I can give you is education. 
Fight hard to be educated. The rest they will take away from you. But your education, you will die with it. So, so true. So, and yet my grandmother was not educated. But that's one thing she understood. Therefore, okay, run the, the, the script faster. So I grew up without knowing my dad until now. I didn't Never even, knowing your dad. I didn't Never even setting, no, I I didn't even know how he looked like. He looked like. Until August last year, that's when a brother of mine, who when I was a baby, knew my dad because where, where my mother got married was her auntie, her brother, her father's sister. So my mother's auntie, who is in the same area with my dad, who is long passed on, my brother remembered that. During COVID, something just happened. He just said, no, your dad, I was with your dad when I went back home during COVID. You remember during yeah, COVID, we all yeah. went back either to the rural to find space. Or, so he says, young brother, your, your dad is alive. I said, what are you talking about? Mm. But the way I was brought up, I didn't care because I then got into a space where God became my father. Mm. So I didn't care. Oh, wow. Then my wife said, no, it's important you get to know the man. My wife pushed me to say, let's do something about it. Mm -hmm. She pressed my brother to say, let's go and see the old man. And we drove to Guru. What a day mm -hmm. it was. What a day. Talk to us about that day. So the very first day I got, my brother said, I'll direct you there. We went to Guru. How Grand old Point. Uh, were you last year when you met your dad? Man, 54 years, 54 old. years old. Wow. I was just turning into 54, and I'd never seen him. So there you are. You see this man. <laughs> there you are. I see the old man. He sees me, and now I've got my sister, which, who he never saw, because she was pregnant when we left. And when he saw my sister, he remembered me. When I saw my relatives, I looked like all of them. I didn't need uh, Tinashe. I didn't need Tinashe. <laughs> we looked all the like. So... My father started narrating, telling me about all to prove. He talked about my mother, my aunties, my uncles, and everybody else back where I was, I was raised. Where is uh, uh, this one? Where is this one? I'm shocked. You know all these people? And you dare not look out for me. What? How does he answer that question? He answered the question and blamed it on my mother. Okay. He blamed it on my mother. He gave me a story about when my mom was suffering there, she devised a story to run away. Mm. Together with their auntie, they agreed to say my grandfather, Patena, mm -hmm. had died mm -hmm. because she was suffering. She needed just a way to be let off. So they wrote a letter which purportedly they say it came from Mutare. <laughs> so they gave it to my dad. Her and well, was this to escape your dad? Exactly. To run away from your father? They wanted okay. her to escape from my father because the story they tell me, my mother told me, my dad didn't uh, um, substantiate it. He didn't delve into that. But this story is very interesting. So my auntie and her, uh, her auntie and her devised this, gave him the letter. When he heard that his father-in-law had died, he raised money, gave them to go. That was the end of it. Wow. My mother said, we'll never go back. And he never came to look for He for never came to look for my mother mm. because he, he had not paid Lobola anyway. I see. So what he had done is when he was in Mutare, he had picked my mom. We used to visit my grandmother for beer drinking. That's when he saw my mom, who was saving them, because he was friends to my uncle Patena, who was a brother to my mother. So you are 54. I'm 54. He's 96. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Talk to me about, are there any regrets on your side? Is, is there any hurt on your side? Have you gone through some forgiveness? Amazingly, not at all. I love the old man. Why? Because by that time, God had already dealt with me. 
no inch of regret. In fact, I'm so glad I got to know him when I'm where I am. Because number one, I don't need him. I don't need anything from him. He needs everything from me. I'm at a place where I don't need him. The only thing that I feel, if my mom had known that I was going to look out for him, it was going to be disaster. Mm. She would have never liked it. Really? Because of the hurts that, yeah. but I would have then helped them to come together. Watch this now. Mm. Mm. So we got there. Let me stop you there. Yeah. Let me stop you there. Um, we're going to take a break. Eh? Yes. Um, please don't go away. Um, you know, a lot of people hurt from not having grown up with their fathers or known their fathers. And uh, Bishop and I are going to go to that place and see if there are any lessons for us. So see you on the other side. I wanted to be a soldier mm. for one reason. Mm. Get my gun, go kill some few people. Mm. Enter the digital newspaper era bringing the latest news and events to our fingertips in real time. Imagine getting instant unlimited access to the news deck, the standard, and the Zimbabwe independent, all on one unified platform. Introducing the Newsday e-reader, a quick and effortless means of keeping up with the rapidly evolving global affairs. We are excited to announce our latest offering, the Corporate Bundle for Group Access. The Corporate Bundle gives corporates unlimited localized access to all three publications at a discounted price. Connect your employees and guests accessing your corporate network to authentic news in real time. In comes the e-reader bundle for individuals. The Newsday e-reader individuals bundle unlocks a one-month free unlimited e-reader access to all three AMS publications. An affordable annual subscription thereafter will keep you connected. You can also subscribe to the AMH annual content bundle for as little as $19.99, unlocking unlimited access to scholarship updates, vacancies and notices, properties and mortgages, the Green Digest, tenders, both government and NGOs, and the Sunday Consolidated Bundle. To activate your e-reader subscription, scan the QR code appearing on our website or any of the AM Edge publications. Download the Newsday e-reader on the App Store or Google Play Store, or register via the link digital.alphomedia.co.zw. To access the AMH content bundle, scan the QR code appearing on our website or any of the AMH publications, or say hi on WhatsApp number 0718-787-962 to start enjoying unlimited content. Famba ne tai, hamba ne skati, famba ne chokwadi, hamba ekteni swemi, famba ne news, Hamba Le News. For more information, contact Blessing on 0773-017-561 or Lauren on 0773-253-517. Welcome back to my conversation with Bishop Nevan Parutza. So you are reconciled with your father. A lot of people walk around saying, I can't do A, B, C because yes. I never had a father. I'm like this because I never had a father. They go around carrying hat. And sometimes the fact that they didn't have their fathers becomes a crutch and an excuse why they can't do things. Did you go through that kind of stuff yourself? Are, are you okay? I'm very good. Why? <clears throat> I wasn't good. You were not good. But... By God's grace, let me tell you. At one point, I asked my mom very difficult questions that I later on regret. I asked her why I was in this situation. Because I didn't grow up with all things that I needed. Going to school was very tough. I needed to do bricks, uh, do firewood for people to raise money for school. Uh, go and look after people's cattle, go and look after. Now, 
And those were points and moments of hurt. What made a turnaround from my hurts? And I tell people, don't ask your parents questions that you're not supposed to ask them. Why? Because I let, later on learned that I asked my mom put her under necessary pressure for the decisions, best decisions that she made at, at that, that particular point. time. She made the best decision for me at that particular time. If I were in her place, I could have made probably worse decisions. That's a lesson that I've learned in life. Now, so I was hurt. My mother passed on at a time I really wanted to show her that I needed to pay her for what she did. Okay. But unfortunately, she died just before I became something. Mm. The same with my grandmother. And God was teaching me that you got to learn to do things for people, not because they did anything for you. Because now I had no object or I had no object of love, so to speak. I had nobody to show that love that I really cared for. Now my attention had to move to people that I didn't even know to love them. God was teaching me something. You, now, let's go to the head. Yes. You, were, you were saying you were not okay at some point. Yes. That's an important place for people to learn lessons. Describe to us when you say you were not okay. What, what, what did that look like? It was so bad because I grew up being the, let me say, the slave of the family. All what others were enjoying, whose fathers were there, was out of what I was doing. Okay? I provided for people who had their parents because I had to make do to make an environment workable for me when I grew up with my Sekurus. By the way, I am Parutsa because that's my mother's name. Okay? But I'm China because that's my father's name. The 96-year-old yes, man that you've discovered. That's now. my dad. So my actual name is Bishop Muchina. Okay? But I grew up in Parutsa because... That's my mother's maiden name. So when I, all my names and everything became that. Okay, so let's put it there. Yeah. Bishop Mbarazi, yeah. Muchina. Yeah. Okay, so it was very hurting. When others are calling their parents, dad, do you have no one to call dad? When others are being celebrated, I had no one to celebrate me. Let me tell you, mm. I was good in school. Nobody ever celebrated me. In fact, my being good became a point of contention. So people always wanted to disadvantage me. So that's the point of hurt. Because fathers are supposed to be there to celebrate their children. Mm. And you have no one to celebrate you. When you are hurting, you have no one to hurt with you. Mm. When you are happy, you have no one to be happy with you. And that's what fathers should do. Mm. But, so... When I gave my life to Jesus, that's where the turning point was. When was that and what had happened? Right. What happened is, now I'm in Mutare. My uncle paternal just had issues with me. He decided to chase me with an ex. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't be laughing, but... <laughs> it's okay. So he came home and said, I'm going to chop you. I tried to look, what have I done? So my... My auntie, my mom's younger sister, heard the story. She was living in Epworth. Remember, my entrance into Arari was Epworth. The story is complicated. So she quickly dashes back to Mutare to rescue me mm -hmm. from this uh, man who wants to ex who wants to ex me. Because all my life I was serving him. He was the youngest of in my mother's family. He was the youngest. So we were not too different from each other. He was older than me, a little older, but probably he felt I may inherit his mother's thing because since my, uh, grandmother has, had died now, so we have no protection anymore. So my aunt took me from Mutare. I was actually about to finish my oven of bricks to make some money. I left it there. In fact, last night, one of my brothers was telling me, let's go back and get our money. <laughs> Yesterday, you know, my, my, my brother in the community there phoned me to say, we didn't get our money because I left in a half. So I came to Arari, stayed in Epworth for 10 years. That's when I gave my life to Jesus. How? A man who was in Bible school then in the 
nine, uh, 80s into 90s was sent by God to Apple to say, there is a man I've sent there, go and meet with him. Mm. My story is amazing. Mm. He was sent by the church to go to Blauheim. He says, no, I saw a vision. There's a man I must meet in Apple. So he came in defiance to what the church leaders had sent him to do. So they said, if you want to go to Epworth, go. We have no money to help you. So he came on his own because he had seen a man in a vision. Mm. And I was that man. Wow. So he came. I was walking in Epworth there by Munyuki Shopping Center. He came to me and he spoke to me. And said what? And he started talking to me about Jesus. And later on, he told me the vision. He said, you are the man I saw in a vision. I was the first convert of his in Epworth. And I stayed there the next 10 years. And God started doing a work in me. Because he was specific. I wouldn't be that man who would have given his life to Jesus. No, I was too bitter at that point. If you would have asked me, what do you want to do when you grow up? Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a soldier mm. for one reason. Mm. Get my gun, go kill some few people, mm -hmm. then kill myself. Mm -hmm. Done. Who did you know who you wanted to kill? Yes, I did. Who, who did you want to kill? Oh, there were a number of people. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be busy, eh? <laughs> there were a number of yeah. people that um, I really thought really did me harm. And I thought if I become a soldier, get my gun. That's an happy place to be. It so. was. It was. It was a painful place. I really thought there were a lot of people who worked so hard mm -hmm. to disadvantage me. Number one, one of the men is the man who chased me with an ex. Yeah. Because I was so good in school, I had a group of teachers who had wanted me to go to Marist Brothers, Mutare Boys Eye, and he just made sure that I couldn't get that opportunity. He lied about paying my exam fee, and a lot of complications uh, uh, happened there when I was writing my O-levels. And then there were other people who were part of this whole fiasco, whom I thought... I, but I, God I suppose right now all those people are forgiven? Totally forgiven. Okay. In fact, I've helped so many of them. Uh, this man I'm telling you about, I've raised his children, sent them to school, did everything what, I what, can. What lesson is there for us? Um, Bishop grows up, doesn't know his father, gets to meet his father at 96, has been beat, he wants to go to the army to come and kill people, ends up forgiving them. What's the, what's the, what's, what's, what are the lessons there for us, uh, Bishop? The lesson is, what is forgiveness? Okay, when I, before I get there, let me tell you, when I, how I forgave my father, I went to see him. Within three weeks, I put money together for him to go and pay Lobola of, on my mother. Okay? to regulate our relationships. So I gave him money to say, here is money, um, a couple of thousand US dollars. Go and do the right thing. Go and do the right thing with my- With our culture. With my, do the correct cultural thing. So I gave him the money. He made his uh, relatives there. Me, I gave him the money, drove him, and I became part of the Mukwasha. I'm, I'm marrying my mom who died 1996. It was very interesting. So I gave him the money. I said, okay, take what you need to do. Let's go do the right thing. He's so proud of me. He's, he's over the moon. But I said, you can't be over the moon before you do the right thing. Yeah. So he went there to meet his in-laws. What, what a joy for them to reunite. But I'm telling the process of healing, that for me, that was the process of healing. Legitimize the real, do the real thing for it to be legitimate. So he went, he paid. They, they, all, they were also very crazy because for them, I brought a very good uh, value addition to the name Barros. So they didn't even want to hear our change by name. I didn't say, I say to them, look, I've already invested too much in this name. To change it. So you won't change the name. I might. You might change I it. might change. I, I might use both. Mm. It doesn't really. So I said, listen, this is not the issue here. The issue here is to heal the families. Mm. So he got the money, go, paid everything. Done. However, let's go back to the, to the lesson. Yeah. What God had taught me, because I've not been hurt only by my upbringing. Even in church, people hurt each other. Mm. I've had people have hurt me, even in church. I've had people have hurt me in life. But there's one big lesson God has taught me. 
that by the time I met my dad, he was already forgiven. This is the thing. How did God forgive us? The true forgiveness that we find in the Bible, the one who is hurt knows the exact amount or Eight, the value, nine, mm. the value of the hurt comes from the one who is hurt, not the one who hurt. So let's talk about God yeah. himself. We hurt God. We were the offenders and God was the offended. God understood how much he was hurt by us as a humanity. And we did know the cost of the pain to God. And God knew the pest. God knew the cost. And the cost was Jesus. So what did God do? He went and took the best, the only, and came to us and said, I have forgiven you, Trevor. <laughs> you hurt me so much. This is the price of what you have done to me. I'm paying so that you receive my forgiveness. We do it the opposite. Forgive me first before I can talk to you. Correct. We do the opposite. You said, you hurt me, come and ask for an apology. Come and apologize. So that I forgive you. That's not God's way of forgiveness. No, no. God says, I hurt you. You come to me, give me a gift. This is how much you hurt me from where I stand. And I forgive you. Receive yeah. so and that I you understand you. I have forgiven you. So it is the hurt who must pay those who hurt us. Wow. That's the biblical way. Yeah. We learn from our Heavenly Father. Yeah. So in my life, I've practiced this. So you, I don't need you to apologize to me for me to forgive you. <laughs> no, you don't need. I must, I must forgive you whether you've apologized or not. Or not. And move on. It's good for you. God forgave us. We never went to apologize. Here is the scripture. The Bible says, whilst we were yet sinners, he forgave yeah. us. So I, once I learned that, and God says, don't be, an, don't be a hypocritical believer. Mm. Practice what I have done to you. Mm. So what I do is I take those who have hurt me for a cup of tea. Yeah. I pay the bill. And I say, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. You don't need to apologize. Whether, whether you, 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 you it's good for me. Or not, yeah. It's for me. Mm. So the, the, still on that a very important issue. Yes. <laughs> when you and I say we are Christians, mm. what do we mean? So I'll tell you what I mean, what I mean when I say I'm a Christian. And you are my bishop, so yes. please correct me with the world watching. <laughs> when, when I say I'm a Christian bishop, I, I'm saying God has found me. He's working on me. Yes. I am not perfect. Yes. I, I wrestle with him. I disappoint yes. him from yes. time. But I, I keep on walking <laughs> yes. the journey, carrying my And clothes. he keeps forgiving you. I, but when I say I'm a Christian, please don't think that I'm perfect. Correct. Is, is that a right way of saying, do you want to expand on Let that? Let me expand on that. Down, yeah? Yes. When I say I'm a Christian, what is simply the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian or a believer and a non-believer the difference is very small. When you are a Christian, you begin to sin less. Huh? It's not that you are no longer sinning. What do I mean by begin to sin less? You are subtracting your sins by knowledge. You know this is not right. You stop doing it. An unbeliever keeps on adding. Because they don't know. Because they don't know. So the knowledge that we have. My people suffer because, because of, of lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. So the difference between us believers is we are disciples of Christ. Mm. Every day I learn something. This is not right. I improve on it. I stop doing it. Believers but, but not, are not, not sinless. By my power. Yes, not, not by no, my no. power. By the power of the word of God. Mm. So what I say is believers are not sinless. But they sin less. Wow, powerful. I'll stop you there and we take a break. And, and when we come <laughs> back, one Mahatma Gandhi said, I like your Christ, but not your Christianity. <laughs> exactly. I want us to come back and talk exactly. to that. Yes. Um, don't go away. See you on the other side. Those who are in doing church ministry are taking a whole lot of people to hell.
Welcome back to our conversation with Bishop Nevam Paruta. So Bishop, Mahatma Gandhi describes it that way, and I'll, I'll repeat the quote, you know, uh, the quote, I like your Christ, but not your Christianity. And he, go, he went on to say, and I quote, Christians above all others are seeking wealth. Their aim is to be rich at the expense of their neighbors. Their prosperity is far more essential to them than the life, liberty, and happiness of others. Bishop, you and I as Christians have done a disservice to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Can you push back on that? That's, 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 that's very touching, that statement. We have done a great disservice. The Christ that we are trying to preach is not the one we are presenting to people. The Christ of the Bible is not the one we have presented to people. It's very unfortunate. Why do I say so? Because those who are preaching Christ, they've become professionals. We are not called to be professionals. We are called to be servants. Unfortunately, the whole thing that you see today, I'm glad that pastors don't have a heaven. And a whole lot of them, or let's say, those who are in, doing church ministry are taking a whole lot of people to hell. Why? We are presenting ourselves and not presenting the Christ of the Bible. This is what Christ said. He said some made themselves eunuchs. Some were made eunuchs by God and some were made eunuchs by men. Okay, some were born eunuchs. Why is that particular phrase eunuch? What is a eunuch? A eunuch is a man who does not reproduce, okay? Eunuchs were normally uh, made to serve kings and kingdoms so that they, don't, they do not reproduce with queens to preserve, to preserve the lineage. But what does pastors do now? Mm -hmm. Because the calling, we are called like eunuchs to serve the church. Okay, so what have we done? We have, we have gone there and spoiled the bride of God, the church, and now we are producing ourselves. So the, the divine kingdom of God, which is supposed to be saved by us as eunuchs so that we do not temper with God's, uh, with God's lineage, lineage most of them. That's why you see these papas. These, these are people who are reproducing themselves. Unfortunately, they have no heaven to take those people. We are supposed to present the Christ who came to serve, who came as a gift from God to humanity that had fallen, so that we present the Christ, the, the church, without blemish. But what have we produced now? You have produced so many imparters. That's a blemish church. So many whoever next. And people take it so lightly. So lightly. But God says in the Bible that you guys are going to be charged, uh, 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 judged quite sternly. Definitely. But do we understand that because we're overwhelmed by trying to make money, trying to make riches? In, in fact, most of it now, what surprises me with this, us who are called by God, and now it's mixed anyway. And you can't, we wait until the last when God sifts between the chaff and he says, let them grow together. Mm. Let them grow yeah. together. <laughs> and the, the, the wheat and the... And, yeah. the, and, 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 and the tares. Yeah. We are growing together. Time will come when God separates. That will be a very difficult time for most of those who are deliberately trying to make either money, a name, or all other kinds of things out of Christ. Therefore, not preaching the Christ of the Bible, but using the Christ of the Bible to put ourselves on the pedestal. So, a couple of things, uh, Bishop. Why don't the Christians call out these men of God who are not teaching according to the Bible? <laughs> like that. Why don't they call, call them out? Point number one. 
do, do you mind just briefly telling them <laughs> on that? Why not call these people out? Because you, you are watching as these men are reproducing themselves in the multitudes, but they're doing it in a manner that is not biblical. Why not call these people out? Correct. First of all, number one, God is not defended by human beings. I see many people try to defend God. <laughs> Don't do that. God will defend himself. He's, he's the creator. I see many people, even in my position, I'm the Evangelical Fellowship of Zimbabwe president. I'm the chair of Zimbabwe Heads of Christian Denomination. People put pressure on my... So let, let, let's just remind people of who you are. Yes. You are the current president of the Evangelical Fellowship of Zimbabwe. Yes. You are the presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Assembly of Zimbabwe. Yes. You are you are recently elected chairman yes. of the Zimbabwe Heads of Christian, Christian. Denomination. So yes. there's a huge responsibility that sits on you. True. You should be one of the biggest puppets. <laughs> a man of God. So yeah. Correct. Yeah. Why am I not one of the biggest puppets in town? And yet I hold all those responsibilities. I'm here as a servant. Among them all, I'm the chief servant. I'm here to serve the church, to serve my country, to serve the community, not to make a name out of this. Uh, at, at one point, um, when I became the EFZ president, I'm running for the second term now, the first term, I had all kinds of newspapers come to my office to take a story, uh, including yourselves. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, Newsday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, News day. Dependent, the standard. Yeah. So I say to the team that came to my office, give me two weeks. Yeah. I'll call you to have a story. Mm -hmm. And until now, I mean, the second term, I've never called them for a story. Why? It's not about me. Mm. It has never been about me. It's about serving. And I would have carried a very big story. This guy who has come to. No. The Bible says, we who serve in the church, those who want to be great among the elders. Yes, the Bible says we must be servants. Mm. But it says those who want to be first among the servants must be slaves. They must serve. There's a difference between a servant and a slave. Mm. We are supposed to be slaves. We don't do it so that we get accolades out of it. However, Let's, why are we not calling them out? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. Now, number one, we are not necessarily qualified to call them out. When I say qualified, I will qualify that. Sure. We're not qualified in the sense that God knows exactly, even those who, who look like qualified, God, because it's a heart issue. How do I read exactly what's going on in your heart? People are deceitful. The Bible says, a man's heart is deceitful and says desperately wicked. How, how do you know? Now, we can make a mistake by then trying to say this one is like this. Mm. This They know themselves. Mm. And I've said to people, most of these pastors, prophets, uh, see a one, two, up to 15, and they know themselves what they are doing. And God knows them. And they know that God knows them. Now, what, 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 what can I just hold you there? Yes. What about the people that follow them? Good. What we then need to do is teach the truth so that people are able to differentiate. It's very easy when you test a fake knot and a real knot, the fake food and real food. The biggest problem is that we risk ourselves to be to be judgmental on people who know exactly what they're doing. I'll use this Shona uh, say. Ukatore wa embe ne benzi patsime uchigeza. Ukari manyisa benzi. Wano wano fungoti uyo ndo uno penga. Nuguti hiro raka bata embe yu auna. Embe zacho dezako. It's your clothes. If you are a, the one who's naked. Then. If a madman takes your clothes, well, you are bathing in a river. This, this is our cultural heritage. Yeah. They are holding your clothes and you are naked and you are chasing them. People think a madman is chasing a person who is normal. Some of these are crazy people. 
why should a normal person like me chase after them? Mm. And the whole world will think. And you know, they're very good at mm. making you look mm. like you don't know what oh, you're sure, doing. Sure. Think. But uh, Pastor, uh, uh, Bishop, I must uh, still go there. Yes, so let's go there. Because let's go there in, in terms of um, you are seeing the multitudes that follow these people. Correct. And they're following them because of the beautiful cars, massive houses, and mm. these lifestyles, and that kind of stuff. Mm. People are taken by those kind of things. Mm -hmm. You don't have the big car mm -hmm. that these guys are mm having. -hmm. So how, how, for me, I my heart is with those people that are being led astray. Bishop. Okay. First of all, uh, um, people tend to think material blessing is a sign of God's anointing. And all of us, are, are, if God blesses me and gives me a house, give, I must not use that as a sign of an anointing. That's not, that's not necessarily what it is. But there are those who are blessed, genuinely blessed. Mm -hmm. But there are those who are making, and, and, and there are people who think because you have a television ministry or you have this, therefore, it's not like so. It's not like so. It's unfortunately that our people are being hoodwinked. Mm. And it's not, it did not start today. No. Hell is still waiting for such. We will do our best to teach people the truth the Bible says in the last days, people would not want to hear the truth. They want things that are tickling to their ears. Now, we will do our best to teach the truth, to teach the right doctrines. But even Jesus' time, they were there. Even during the very beginning of the church, yes. in the book of Acts. Paul writes about them. Paul writes about them. Mm. When, when the church started, there was a gentleman who was very learned called Gamaliel. They went to ask Gamaliel about the disciples, and they went to judge them the same way. They said, we have looked at them. They look so uneducated, but they were very effective. So what they did is they asked a qualified Gamaliel to describe an unqualified but effective John, James, and them who were doing so well. And what, what did he say? He said, if it is of God, mm -hmm. we will see. He said, there were others who came. And because it wasn't of God, it vanished. It vanished. If, if I was not on air, I would have mentioned a number who came by and are no longer on the scene. Oh, yeah. The true church of God will remain intact. But you 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 talking about Gamal and the way he tried to distinguish between mm -hmm. uh, the disciples and so forth. You, you take me to President Paul Kagame. Yes. Has banned yes. 6,000 churches and mosques. Yes. And Rwanda has put in a law that says pastors should have degrees. Mm -hmm. This is because President Kagame is seeing mm -hmm. the abuse yes. that the men of God are inflicting on their, on their followers. Correct. Is Correct. this how, we should, how countries ought to curb uh, the, the abuse? Pastors standing on their congregants. Pastors making their congregates eat and drink stuff. Mm. Um, is this how we stop stop it? By I, demanding that they I, have I, I, theological I, degrees? Yeah. There are those who are also very theologically trained who are doing the same. It's not an issue of education. It's an issue of the heart. I have very educated people who are doing, who are abusing people. Whilst... From, a, from an administrative political perspective, that can seem like a solution. I don't really think it is the ultimate solution because they are very educated. Some of the people who are abusing people in this country are very educated. The people we must educate is the flock so that they're able to differentiate between chaff and wheat. They're able to differentiate between the truth and the falsehoods. Because the Bible says in the land, in the last days, knowledge will increase. Knowledge does not sort out a man's heart issue. No. Knowledge does not, knowledge out there, whether it's degrees about theological degrees or whatever next, <laughs> the more you get educated sometimes, the more you become a sophisticated sinner. I am doing all kinds of education. I am pursuing my PhD. It's can, not improving on my morality. <laughs> it's not. 
You're not getting better no, as a human no, being. No, it's so a hard you, issue. You have done a master of arts in yes. leadership with the University of Zimbabwe. Yes. You hold a diploma in humanitarian diplomacy with yes. the College of Peace. You have a certificate in peace and medi medi mediation, rather. Yes. And you're currently working on a PhD. Yes. Why are you doing this if this is not going to improve your, your, your heart Good. your spirit? It will improve my skill of handling people and handling the word of God, yes. But it does not necessarily improve the state of my heart. The state of my heart is improved by imp appropriating the word of God in me. It might improve my skill of preaching. Even if I'm the best preacher, it doesn't make me the best saint. I hear you. That's my biggest problem. Yeah. Some of the best preachers sometimes. So what, what am I hitting at here? It's a heart issue. Mm. I have some of the biggest bishops who are the worst. Some of the biggest prophets who are not because God has not touched them. It doesn't matter. There are people who are making being a man of God a profession. Why am I getting myself to do all this? Yeah, I must be able to communicate well. I also have had, you know, when I was when I was um, doing ministry at one time, I had some people who really didn't like the way I used to preach. So what would they do? They would come to me after a very powerful sermon. Instead of repenting, they would come and correct my grammar. <laughs> <laughs> they would say, "You preach very well, but if you can only improve your grammar." So yeah. I want them to have no excuse. <laughs> tell me, tell me, um, who? ministers to you? Who ministers to the bishop? Oh, thank you very much. That's a very important question. I have a couple of people who have deliberately, number one, my wife is very key, just to make sure I stay on, on, on the ground. Yeah. My feet are on the ground. I have a couple of leaders locally uh, who have really taken a deliberate interest in just making sure my feet are on the ground. Yeah. There are a number of them. One person who is really, really, who makes sure every week calls me and check on me, how are you doing, uh, is Dr. Msasiwa. Mm. He just says it is my responsibility to, to make sure on, yeah. that my bishop, who is in charge of the church in Zimbabwe, stays afloat and on ground. Because we and there are a number of them anyway. You, do Most you of the key... Do you want to mention them? Yeah. I, 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 I am checked on by the likes of Bishop Tudor Basmank. Mm. He prays for me. Yeah. He he comes out and checks on me. I have uh, Bishop Tom Grishel. He mm. does the same. Mm. Dr. Msasua in particular is always on my case, yeah. almost on a weekly basis. Does, checks that, on does that help? It does. In what way? In many ways. Emotionally, with where I am, let yeah. me tell you, I'm bombarded with things every day. Yeah. I'm bombarded with issues politically going on in the country. What's your what's your take? Yeah. Why are you not doing this about this? Why are you not doing this about this? They are spiritual issues in the nation. People, I have people in my office almost AQ. And this time around, he's not praying for people's issues. He's dealing with real matters that concerns our nation and leaders. In, in, in whether it's in political spheres, business, and church. So because of that, if I don't have those men who look after me to check on me, to say, what is it that you could have done wrong today? How was your day? So they look after me, and I'm aware. One of the things that has helped me is the more popular you become as a leader, it helps you to sin less. I'm very conscious of my environment all yeah, the time. Yeah. It also helps. For me, it helps because I'm always thinking, if I do this, what is Trevor going to mm. say? If I do this, how about That's Susan? That's important, isn't it? So it, yeah. besides the Bible itself, who I am in society has helped me to keep myself a, a focused. A big question, uh, I, whew, I wish we had uh, more time, uh, <laughs> Bishop. Uh, my people are looking at me like, uh, you know. But I must ask you this, particularly during COVID, Yes. People dying. Yes. Tough times. Yes. What Zimbabwe is going through. 43 years of difficulty and hardship. Yeah. And people ask, where is God in this? Mm. Why would a loving and just God allow us to go through this? Mm. I lost my mother and father during COVID. Mm. 
Uh, and that. and uh, we had um, uh, um, sitting before you there, mm. um, Ravenna called Parinyat was saying, mm. and I was, I want to ask God, you, you took my twins. Mm. Um, what are you going to do with my twins in heaven? Mm. My question to you is, in those tough times mm. when people ask, why is the just and loving God in this? Mm. What answer do you give as a bishop? Good. The justice of God is based on his omnipotence. Because God knows everything, including things that we don't know. So God's justice is based on him knowing literally everything. That at a time when you ask God questions that you're not supposed to ask him because you're ignorant, when we all get to heaven, we will praise him for all the things that we think are bad happening to us. Because we don't understand the past and the future. Correct. And everything else. Now, I'll say this. In God, there is no past, there is no present, uh, there is no past and future. When it comes to God, God knows everything in the present. It's past to you or present to you because you are limited in, in, scope, your, understanding. in your understanding. When we put everything before God, the, the, the past, the present, and the future is all present to God. So he knows everything at once. So when he allows certain things, his permissive will is all for your good. Yeah. At the moment when you are sitting, you think, I can tell you stories about my life, certain things that happened that I was so angry. Now, when I sit here, I said, wow. wow. Thank God it happened. Thank you that you made me grow up without knowing my father. I'm grateful for that. If I'd known my father all this time, I would not be what I am. When I look at my clan and what has happened and what happened to me with my... So here is what I would say to people like you. God knows what is best for you. And he allows it. There is the permissive, permissive will of God. Will and the perfect, perfect will, of God. will of God. So in the perfect will of God, he allows you to go through certain things that you eventually, when you come to a place where God says, come and see all what I was doing for your good. You know, I can tell, I, I, I can share with you certain dots that I can, you know, join going backwards. And it all makes sense. It all makes but sense. But when, it when it's happening, it's very painful. It's very, very painful. It's very, very painful. Um, wow. What a, what a, I mean, uh, we could go, have gone on and on, <laughs> on and on. Um, wow. What is good? God is good. God is good. And all in that, I'm, I give praise to God. Do you think God. you found your purpose? And what, what is that purpose? God's purpose for me and all what I've gone through was God to remove selfishness out of me completely to kill the flesh out of me we generally are selfish beings uh, all what i had to do and what i've done to millions of other children to raise them as their own dad pay school fees look after them do all what i could do without an inch of selfishness all what i've done in leadership to provide leadership, mentoring for the future leaders is because I totally understand if I don't do that, I don't have anything biological to selfishly say, I'll do it for this. For me, I found purpose. God, I understand it without bitterness, deliberately, because I'm cut uniquely to serve. Aren't we all unique? Everybody is unique. Yeah. And everybody must find their unique Nickname. niche mm. to serve a community, mm. to serve a people, to serve a nation without, a, without desperately being selfish mm. to serve self. So I have found purpose in that God really wants me to serve and serve his people without desiring self aggrandizement if you want praise and stuff none of us is perfect yes sir what is it that you're battling with as a bishop that you are able to share um i am battling with a lot of things yes um, yes i think one thing that i battle with uh you know the, mm -hmm. the 
the spirit of truth dwells in us and mm. produces joy, mm. peace. Mm. One thing I beg of is patience. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. And and I had an incident the other day because I was impatient. Yes. And I, I, for me, it was like the last the the, the, the God's finger waving at me, saying, mm. I've, "I've told you, you're impatient. You've got mm. to be patient." What is it that you're battling with? One thing that I battle with, um, there are many, there are many, it's not one, is um, hereditary traits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I have to watch. And I've put a red line on these things that I have. Now, once I go to know my dad, there are certain things that runs in my blood that I have to put watch on. Wow. And some, one of those, Things is my dad struggles with issues of women. Ah. I don't struggle with that, but I you watch. You gotta be careful. I watch that because I've seen at that age he's still going out, walking five kilometers to look out for other women. What books have you read that you would recommend to our book loving audience out there? Okay, the, the, uh, I'm reading Genius of One. Mm -hmm. I'm reading, passing who, it on. Who wrote Genius of One? Genius of One is was written by. I never remember authors, so. Do you... Yes, I do struggle, <laughs> but it's uh, it's um, it was written by. Oh, come on now. It's okay. Genius of One. Genius of One. Is yeah. it Genius of it. One. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, Speed of Unity mm -hmm. and Passing It On by Speed of Unity is Rob Cutling. Uh, then um, Passing It On by the late Miles Monroe. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, because I'm really, really into legacy issues, into developing the next generation, which is our biggest the biggest tragedy of this generation, Absolutely. particularly us, Morosadza. Yeah, yeah. We always think nobody is better than me. Yeah. But what I think is we must build the next generation on our shoulders to do better. Absolutely. And that, I think, is what we really are lacking. And I'm reading such books so that I really prepare the next generation. I really think where I am now, at my best, I have to prepare the next generation. Can I say this? Leadership is a clock. Hmm? All of us, at any given time, we are the, at the top of our game, at what I call the o'clock. At the o'clock moment of your time, hmm, o'clock, you must always be looking at those ahead of you to prepare them to take over. Absolutely. Because there are those who are coming behind you who are at quarter two when you're at o'clock. Mm. When you are looking at those who are at quarter two, you must always look at empowering them that when they are at their o'clock, when you are past, they must always refer back to you. Oh. That's how you keep yourself relevant. That's powerful, man. Keep yourself relevant by investing in the next generation. What would they say if it wasn't of Trevor? So that's how you keep yourself in circulation. Fantastic. It's empowering the next generation. Fantastic. Bishop, thank you very much. <laughs> thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank what a you. story. Um, allow me to turn yes. over now, Bishop, to uh, our viewers. Um, wow. Wow. You know, yeah, we talked about the papas without naming them. Yes. Um, the Bible says, test every spirit. Um, and I think at the end of the day, mm -hmm. we have a responsibility to emphasize the word as in the Bible. Yes. Not our own interpretation of the word. But also to, to for us to Learn to spend time in the Word. Yes. <laughs> Learn to Off. spend time in the Word in the and word. not wait for the bishop to read to the preach. Bible to me on Sunday. Exactly. I must be able to call out the, the bishop when he quotes the wrong scripture because I'm spending time in the Word. Exactly. What did you mean here? Exactly. Like the Berians. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for, um, um, you know, as you can see, I'm blown away the bishop's... Uh, testimony and his life. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, remember, we are out 7 a.m. Central African time every Monday on YouTube. And to ensure that you don't miss out on any of these quality conversations like the one I've had with my bishop here, please uh, subscribe and you'll get a notification. Uh, share um, and like. 
Uh, thank you. We see your comments uh, below the videos, uh, the criticism uh, that builds us, that makes us stronger. We like the suggestions. Uh, that you make as to who should come onto the show. We have created a, uh, a platform for all the conversations and, and podcasts for your listening pleasure. So go to our website uh, to, 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 to binge on what's there. Until next time, cheers to you all.